Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this, you know. Uh, it's Alex here from Land Vista Aquascapes, and I am out here in Deptford, New Jersey at one of our favorite ponds. This, no, I'm just kidding. This one over here, still one of our favorite ponds. From what we've done this season, it's, you know, it's a thriving ecosystem too. So I'm gonna flip you around and I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that's going on here. Someone, a novice, might look at this and think like, oh, that's really disgusting, it's dirty, look at all this algae. But honestly, this at this point in the season, right at the end of February right now, this is what a pond should look like. This right here is a thriving ecosystem. During the winter, what's gonna happen is all of your bacteria is gonna be in the warmer waters, that's gonna go dormant, and then you're gonna have your cold water bacteria that's still thriving in the pond, but your winter algaes and string algaes like this, they're gonna start to take over and basically that's what's gonna be your ecosystem for your winter time. So you're gonna see sometimes you'll get a bunch of string algae on the bottom of your pond, but that's actually not a bad thing. The string algae is actually doing its job. It's doing the job of what your plants would be doing during the springtime and the summertime. It's gonna be taking all those nitrates and all converting all the nitrification in, in the nitrogen cycle. So your algaes are actually gonna be pulling the nitrates and nitrites out of the water and feeding themselves so all of that fish waste doesn't just turn into ammonia and poison your fish. So one of the things that we'll do to make sure that these ponds are healthy and you know thriving you can sort of see it in some of these areas at the bottom we added rock and gravel if this pond looks familiar to you it's because we did a three-part series when we did the clean out on this and we added rock and gravel to the bottom of this pond this pond behind me was plagued with green water and just sludge sitting at the bottom because it was bare liner over here there's bottom drains at the bottom of the pond so the idea behind not having rock and gravel is that everything washes to a bottom drain. The problem with that is that when you have a bottom drain, everything goes to it. So you've got your back here, there's a five horsepower pump that when it comes out of the waterfall over here, it goes across the pond. And instead of going to the skimmer over here, which is a one horsepower pump, it actually flows across and then goes down to the bottom of the pond. So all of those leaves go down to that bottom grate and then clog it. So that's not where you want your debris to go. You want your debris to go into an area where you can actually get it out. So this skimmer is undersized and it's underpowered. So you can see, I've probably talked about this a couple times, you can see over on the waterfall over here, one side is really powerful, that's a five horsepower. The other side is pretty weak because it's only a one horsepower pump and it's drawing through a really really small skimmer so it's actually choked down the idea of a bare bottom is that all of your sludge and everything is going to keep the pond crystal clear it's not it's it just doesn't work practically so what we do is we do rock and gravel and that provides a area for all of that good bacteria and in the winter for the good winter algae as i like to call it um to grow and flourish and that keeps like you can should see let me flip you around you can see all the way to the bottom look how absolutely crystal clear that is and then should that is just case in point for a thriving healthy ecosystem and like i said it's not even perfect it's got undersized skimmer it doesn't have any external filtration there's just a pool pump over there there's no bead filter or anything um, one thing that it does have going for it over here is these waterfalls are actually built sort of like a mini bog or like an oversized biofalls. This pump basically comes in to the bottom and then flows up through a bunch of different stages of gravel. Unfortunately, these aren't sized properly. So the pipe comes in over and then flows down into the bottom and then up through a couple different stages. Unfortunately, these are basically like giant biofalls, but it's still, it's not enough for this 17,000 gallon pond. So it's working right now. Fortunately, there's only a small load. There's all of the fish are actually hiding under this cave right here. About when we did the clean out, there's about 204, I believe was the exact count. Of those 204, two of them are large koi, so about like uh, 12 to 18 inches. And then the rest of them are only like 
little guys like six to eight inches or so. So the bio load in this, this size pond is almost negligible. I don't want to call it negligible because that is quite a bit of fish, but this system is able to keep up with it. And the gravel that we put in the bottom of the pond is absolutely doing its job. Also, the way these skimmers are set up, we've played around with the media in here. There is a one horsepower pump in the bottom that basically draws in through here. It's actually got, so this is the end of the, snor uh, end of the skimmer, but it's actually got like a snorkel that extends out to the front of the pond. So you can see the, the flow from the algae pulling in from there. So it's not, it does skim because you can tell there's not a ton of leaves and everything. There was a ton that I just pulled out from the skimmer basket, but you can see it's actually working. So that's good. Just a little bit undersized for this size pond. It would need to be wider um, for it to function properly. But there's a couple pads in here that's basically a couple different stages of mechanical. And there's also gonna be some biological material that lives in there. I didn't post a lot of this throughout the season, but this pond, after we did the clean out, it did stay green for a while. And we think that that's basically because we did the clean out so late. I think we did this in about June. So it was like right in the peak of where it was start. It was already really warm and algae wanted to grow. So we put the rock and gravel in here and it wasn't seeded. It hadn't seasoned and everything and gotten to this point where there's actually a colony living there. So the algae was basically primed to take over and it, there was just free floating green algae. But as I showed you, once it got into the later months, it got to a point where it was actually stable and staying clear. So many people that are like, oh, you de definitely need a UV. It's gonna clear up all of this gunk in the bottom. That's not true. UV lights aren't gonna do anything for the algae in the pond. In fact, this sort of algae, very good for the pond. So you don't actually wanna even worry about taking this. This stuff will actually start to die back when the plants start taking over, which is exactly what you want. Basically, they're doing their job right now because the plants are in hibernation. The plants are basically dormant because it's too cold for them to grow. So once the plants start growing, they'll start feeding off of all of those nutrients and then the algae will start to die back. The other thing that you want to do during this time is you want to add a pond starter bacteria or some sort of other bacteria for your pond. So the stuff that we're going to use, I actually have it over there next to the skimmer. That is a pond starter bacteria. That is a formula specifically made by Aquascape. There's a, a ton of different bacteria on the market, but this one is one that we like to use, especially in clean out season. I'll show you that right there. So this stuff is concentrated, or the gallon is extremely concentrated because it's contractor grade. You can actually get it in a pump bottle, so it's like one pump per 100 gallons or something like that. I'm not sure what they, Exact thing, but that stuff is absolutely amazing for this type of or this this time of year because this is the time of year where your water's not warm enough to use like a dry bacteria or anything else, um, especially in our area. It depends on where you guys are, but um, it's perfect to use this time of year because this stuff works from 40 degrees and above. There's also a cold water bacteria which I decided not to use today because pond starter is arguably better for this application. Uh, the cold water bacteria works from 50 degrees and below, but the pond starter works from 40 and up. So we're at the time of the season where the weather looks like it's breaking and it's starting to get warmer. It's warm as far as, you know, this type of time of year, it's still in the 50s, but it's in that range and the weather's only gonna go up or stay at least above 40. So that's the perfect bacteria for us to add right now. And that's gonna kickstart the bacteria cycle. All this algae is gonna start to die back because of the plants growing and all of the warmer bacteria starting to colonize again. So basically all of those nutrients are gonna be taken out by the algae right now because of the plants and the bacteria being dormant. But now that it's starting to get warmer, the bacteria is going to start to grow and the plants are going to start to grow again and they're going to start taking out the nutrients and taking that away from the algae and starving it out. So when you add a supplement like a pond starter bacteria, it's a perfect way to make sure that this algae doesn't get out of control when it starts to get warm because you want to outcompete your algae. 
again, algae's not a bad thing, but if you don't want it to get out of control, you want to outcompete it. So heavy plantings uh, and bacteria supplements, always a good idea. That's pretty much all I got for today. I just wanted to walk you guys around, show you this pond, show you how it's flourishing in the dead of winter. As you can see, the lake behind me is frozen solid. It's just now the first day in a, probably a month and a half that it's been over 40 degrees. It's about probably like 55 right now so far. It's supposed to be in the 60s, which is amazing. We've had nothing but snow, ice, and frozen everything. So I'm happy that spring is finally showing itself. Anyway, if you like this video, hit a, hit a thumbs up. Uh, hit that subscribe button to see more content like this, more videos from us. And then hit that bell so that you'll be first in line to be notified when our videos come out. And hit that dislike if you didn't like it. You know, let me know what you don't like about it. Am I talking too much? And just give me some feedback. Head down to the comments. I'm always in the comments responding to you guys. So let me know what, you, what kind of content you guys want to see. And, you know, as always, you guys have a good one and I will see you in the next one. Take care guys.